Podcasters Roundtable, round 41, podcasting predictions for 2015, or do you prefer 2015? I don't know. I guess it's a toss-up, but uh, very exciting. As I'm putting together this round, uh, I'm, I'm realizing, oh yeah, I don't quite care for non-evergreen content as much as possible, right? Because someone's going to watch this, and who cares about 2015 once we get past 2015? But then I thought, you know what? Nah, it's actually going to be a lot of fun. Uh, because we get to just sort of play with the concept of podcasting and what might happen, right? So that's a lot of fun. And then when we do podcasting predictions for 2016, we can look back and see how many we we got right, which is probably, you know, a big donut or something. But this was, uh, I think this was the brainchild of, of co-host Dave Jackson. So he donated this graciously to the roundtable. It was going to be an episode of uh, the School of Podcasting. And uh, somehow Steve Stewart weaseled his way back onto another roundtable. So I think they're in cahoots. I'm not quite sure what's going on. But uh, we do have one awesome new roundtabler for you. I only made it one because he's that big. But it's a good voice. Another podcast about podcasting, a little newer, but not new to the space. And in fact, used to do a show, I think, a lot like this one with Dave Jackson. So we will meet him in a second. And uh, let's start on the far end by uh, our good friend, co-host Daniel J. Lewis. Welcome back. Thank you. I'm Daniel J. Lewis from the audacitypodcast.com and mypodcastreviews.com. I predict podcasting will still be around. Yeah. Oh. Bold, bold way to start. Way to, way to start. vague <laughs> prediction to start off. Yeah. All right. And if in case I didn't mention it, because Dave can wait, go to podcastersroundtable.com. Get on uh, the list over there. Sign up for the email list. Uh, there's also a section called BA Guest. It's really kind of the same thing because when you sign up, you'll get a chance to fill out a form and you can give us your ideas about what do you want to talk about in podcasting. And that's what we do here. And so you sign up. I know you're out there. We bring you on the roundtable. All right. That's not how Dave got here. Um, I'm not quite sure how Dave got here, but Dave, welcome back. <laughs> I'm Dave Jackson from the School of Podcasting, and I, am I stealing? Steve, is it your thunder, buddy? Who came up with this idea? I think we were both talking about it, so okay. we'll split it. That's, right. that's Steve Stewart, master uh, way of weaving his way into, uh, into another show. Congrats, Steve. From a hotel, probably just down the street. You should just come over here, Steve, and done this live in person. Welcome back. Thank you, Ray. I appreciate it. I'm Steve Stewart from Money Plan SOS. I am your personal finance architect, helping you pay attention, not interest. My first prediction is everybody's going to start podcasting like John Lee Dumas. I I think that already happened, but yeah. um, <laughs> if you're at Podcast Movement, I met a lot of um, entrepreneur type uh, podcasters. No, I so, mean, I mean, you got your couch in the background, you know. <laughs> oh, it's the studio. See, I don't, I don't check in. Yeah. I don't check in. So Big you got the John. Monitor. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Get on that and have your assistant start a podcast. <laughs> Steve, Steve's not making enough money for that. Sorry, buddy. Sorry. All right, new roundtabler. Welcome to the roundtable, Mr. Paul Colligan. Yes, you, sir. Oh wow! Thank you so much. Good to be here. No, you don't want to just start off with a plug. Yeah. Hey, I'm Paul Colligan from thepodcastreport.com at thepodcastreport.com. Um, boy, one day I'll tell you about SEO and iTunes and what the word the does to iTunes, but that's a whole other report. Um, <laughs> I've been invited to my first roundtable. I'm looking forward to it. I've got a couple of predictions that I think will be fun, but uh, thanks for letting me in, guys. Awesome. And what was the show back in the day that you and Dave and some others did together? Dave, today, go ahead. Yeah, today in podcasting, starring Paul Culligan, Dave Jackson, Rob Walsh from uh, Libsyn. At the time, though, podcast was he working for Libsyn at the time? I think he was. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. And uh, the pickle man himself, Gary Leland, now Mister Pottertainment and all things fast pitch softball. Still, still, the fact that you have to ask that question tells you how far back that goes, right? It was a while ago, mm -hmm. and it still gets downloaded. That's the hilarious thing. You guys would actually have topics now. Uh, there's podcasting is so much in the news, right? Lately, that there's actually enough content for, uh, you know, today in podcasting. Whereas you kind of ran out, right? Someone starts a new show, and it's like, eh, that, what yeah, news back, do we have left? It used to be news. It's like, hey, so and so started a podcast, and now it's like, yeah, whatever. Who cares? <laughs> Not a big deal when you start a podcast anymore. All right. Well, Daniel already, you know, he lit this fire and, and threw out a bold prediction right up front. But, you know, I'm thinking 
we should probably reflect briefly on uh, 2014 and say, you know, I'm curious from all of you, what happened in podcasting that you didn't expect, right? And Paul, you may have made some predictions about 2014, but uh, Paul, how about what did you see happen in the space that you really didn't see coming? I did not see the hype machine blowing up to the size that it was going to do this year. Um, you would almost think that podcasting is the second coming with some of the press that we've been getting these days. And um, I did not see that big of a intense focus from a very, very intense demographic. Of course, the funny thing is, is if you look at any stats, it truly is only an intense focus from a very intense demographic. But I did not expect podcasting to get the hype that it was going to get this year. And that's been a good thing, you think? Um, it's, it's been a good thing. Uh, there will be repercussions. Whenever there is intense hype, there is always repercussions about it, and I deal with those in a couple of my predictions. But um, there are going to be a lot of people spending a lot of money buying a lot of microphones and paying for a lot of hosting who are going to be really upset that they aren't getting downloaded a zillion times. And um, there's going to be a lot of people going to say podcasting doesn't work. There are going to be a zillion people going to say podcasting has, has reached its apex. There are going to be a zillion people going to say podcasting doesn't matter anymore. Been there, done that. You know, YouTube or Vine is the next hot new thing. So um, it, it's good that we've gotten the attention. I don't know if we've necessarily done the right things with it. I, I did not see the intensity at which it was going to come, though. I mean, it, it has been crazy. And the interesting side of the crazy is we've got on one side the extreme entrepreneur, you know, John Lee Dumas type of angle. And then on the far, you know, on the, on the far other side, we have the, uh, the tried and true NPR refugees who have been uh, doing some, some really interesting numbers as well. So we're getting it from all sides, and we're going to have to deal with the implications of that in 2015. And so we've seen the surge every, I don't know, what's this happens every like four years, maybe in podcasting, we see sort of this new media attention or a bunch of new media. I say new media, it's confusing when I say that because <laughs> it's like, this is new media, but we see a bunch of new people come to podcasting and say, hey, podcasting, have you seen this thing? It's amazing. Check it out. What do you think drove, what was the last time we saw this kind of attention and what do you think drove it this time? Dave, any thoughts on when was the last time we saw this kind of attention on podcasting? That's a good question. You can was, say it at, was it apps? What drove... What's driving it this time? Well, right now, I would say uh, the the podcasting app, you know, getting on, making it, uh, not so much making it part of the iOS, although that was cool, but it just seemed like more and more people, every month, you know, Rob is coming out with a stat, more and more people are listening mobile, and I think it just started to, that seemed to, to get the ball really rolling, that more and more people are going, oh, here, I, I don't have to get you in front of a computer. I did it uh, Sunday, I was at a Browns game. And I got some fans for, for Nick Suberling because I'm sitting next to a guy from Cincinnati. And I go, do you listen to Who Day Weekly? And I'm like, it's not Who Day Weekly anymore. And he's like, what's a podcast? I'm like, oh, cool. My wife was rolling her eyes infinitely that I was talking podcasting at a Browns game. So and if I, you're going to get your brains beat in at a game, I guess get something <laughs> out of it is the message. <laughs> and, and so I showed him how to subscribe to it. And, uh, you know, so it was cool that I could do that right there in front of him. I have to go, well, if you go back to your computer and go to iTunes and Connect your cable and all that. So other you stuff. think that was last time, right? They don't. They, that's not what's pushing the the new me, the attention this time, right? I think what's pushing it now is probably the entrepreneur thing. We're still riding that, and now cereal. The whole cereal thing is blowing it off the the ceiling. Is that it? Is it the is it the money, Daniel? Is it because we're seeing some people bring in significant amounts of money now? People are now saying, "Hey, podcasting's real." I don't think it's necessarily the money, but I think it's the notable people who are coming into podcasting full force, like with NPR's new shows or with Serial and some of that stuff. It's not just they're taking a popular radio show and putting it available as a podcast, which they've done before and had huge success with that. It's here is this major radio company, major radio hosts with major talents and budgets behind them jumping into the space, really showing that they see something in the space and in some ways believe in it. And that has been happening for years, though. But I think to see it as popular as this, I think that's what's different in 2014. So, uh, Paul, would you agree with that? Is it the sort of host of new talent and money coming to the space or... I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm a bit of the skeptic on this one. I, I believe that most journalists are, are, are three things. They're, they're lazy, 
Uh, they're selfish, and and you know they're right. Um, they create what's easy. Uh, John Lee, I, I love the guy. I have nothing respect for what he's done, but it's an easy story. Um, guy comes back, sixteen months, six, you know, seven figures. It's an easy story. Serial is an easy story. Um, um, the the other startup is an easy story. Um, journalists want to be able to wrap sound bites into the podcasting story, and we've done a really crappy job um, in the past of making it possible. You know, we start to get interviewed, and well, podcasting is the amalgamation of the blogging and the RSS platform with MP3 enclosures. You know, and the journalists just run away screaming. And <laughs> what, what's happened is is the message has become, dude, John could do it. You know, look at this guy. All he did was he added the word on fire, and he does it seven days a week, and now he's a millionaire. You can do the same thing. And um, that's an easy story. You know, Serial um, is an easy story. Um, I think the last type we got was Mark Marin, easy story. Leo Laporte, easy story. Um, we need to start telling our podcasting stories in, in a way that makes a heck of a lot of sense. Probably Shailene Johnson as well, J.J. Virgin um, on the health space. Um, these are these are nice, simple stories, which is what journalism wants. We we are in the uh, you know we're not in the twenty four hour news cycle. We're in the ten minute Twitter news cycle, and uh, podcasting got some really easy stories, and that's why it has exploded in the press over the last year. Um, you look at the numbers, and and our progression is about the same as it was this time last year. There's just a lot more hype associated with it. I, I did once hear someone say podcasting is like sex in middle school. Everybody's talking about it, but nobody's doing it. And I think we still might be in that situation. So do we expect to see the continued press in the 2015, or do we then go back into our sort of, we go back to our thing, and they go on to the next story, and uh, we continue to grow slowly. Podcasting has always grown, grown since its inception, right? More, more listeners, more people producing shows, up and up and up, sl slow but steady. Is that, do we just go back to that, or is something different this time? There, there is is what they're writing, is it, there's something to it? There will be some more stories, um, and, and and the stories help. You know, I mean, anybody who makes podcasts more popular is good for all, all of us right now. Um, anybody who, who, you know, gets the, the good word written, that kind of thing, is there. I think what you're starting to see, though, is you're starting to see some uh, professionalism pop up. You look at the 5x5 five five network, you look at what they're doing there, they are just knocking it out of the park. Uh, growth there is real. It's not based on hype. It's just based on, on, on a process of professionalism that, it, that is really incredible. Uh, you look at some of the names that have come into it. They're slowly but surely dripping out their content. It's doing well. I, I predict we'll probably see, and this isn't one of my, my official predictions, but I, I think we'll see some more stories next year, and um, I think those will help. But, but really, we win when there stop being podcasting stories. That's when we win. Well, me, yeah, I have to wait. You have to... Briefly explain that. Why do we win when they when the attention goes away? Well, because well, when the attention goes away, it's not the hot new thing. You, you, you know, when the attention goes away, when podcasting is no longer a story, it's now about content. You know, um, right now at the end of every episode of John Stewart, you know, John Stewart says, "Hey, if you want to catch the rest of the interview, go to here." Um, we're going to start seeing that in television. We're going to start seeing that in radio. We're going to start seeing that in our own stuff. Authors are going to start doing it. Comedians are going to start doing it. Bands are going to start doing it. And then it's just going to become what we're doing. 117 million Americans, 117 million Americans commute to work in a car every day. 97 million of them are in their car by themselves. They want stuff to listen to. Once they realize that they could be listening to us, we're going to be in a really, really good place. And it's not going to be that hot new thing podcasting. You know, remember back to the, remember email, the spaces of email? What's email? Do you have an email address? What is your email address? Podcasting. What's podcasting? Do you have a podcast? What's your podcast? When we get to what's your podcast, we win the game. So there's a lot of story. there's a lot of awesome content out there, right? More content's being produced every day, but we we want more people to find us, right? We want more people to realize the amazingness that podcasting is. And these stories hopefully drive more yeah. people, right? If it's in the New York Times or if it's on, uh, gosh, what was on The Late Show, I think uh, Ira Glass was on there or Jimmy Kimmel or one of those talking about podcasting, which was amazing, right? So, you know, I hope that uh, even when the attention goes away, we're still getting more new people into podcasting. So hopefully we see that in 2015. But um, Steve, what uh, yes. this is, you are in, uh, this happened because you and Dave were going to do an episode about this, right? 
<laughs> yes. All right. So give me a prediction, right? From 2015, we're closing out 2014 here. What do you see coming for podcasting? For podcasting, I see this happening already, and I think it's going to blow up. It's going to be mobile. Mobile in a couple of ways. One is recording podcasts. The other is promoting your podcast. The mobile sound, that sounds old, right? Does that sound old? That mobile is the mobile. Mobile is here. Mobile is it. Mobile's a thing. We, haven't we already hit that? We've got uh, you know podcast app from Apple, multiple you know Android and iOS apps. Does it feel? But podcast recording mobile, I think, is is probably something different, easier. Yes, and maybe even broadcasting live. Um, you know, like right now, I would consider this kind of mobile. I'm in a hotel room. Uh, and then as far as using mobile to promote, and, and you're seeing the you know text, the, the letters, blah, blah, to this five-digit number, and you'll get invited to a webinar. I mean, you're going to see a lot more of that thing in 2015, I think. Cool. Dave, now back up a little bit. When I was talking to Paul, you had something to interject there. I believe that was you, if you yeah. remember. Yeah, we were just talking about the stories. And to me, it is kind of funny looking back because it was Marin. That was Welcome to Nightville. Remember that one? Oh, my gosh, these guys are doing these stories and blah, blah, blah which then led to startup and start was like, wow, have you heard startup? And then like literally like three weeks later, it was like, wow, have you heard the serial thing? So it seems like there's like one hot potato that's carrying it. It's going to be interesting when somebody passes it to somebody and then they go and like, it's like, oh, it's not the hot thing anymore. Okay. Let's talk about Cosby. Okay. So, you know, it's, it's whatever the story is and it'll be interesting to see who we keep passing it to. I think that's why it's kind of been just a constant barrage of podcasting, podcasting, podcasting. And especially when Marin came out and was like, oh, yeah, I, I, I am making money with this. That's when everybody went, what, hold on? You know, and that's where you saw, um, you know, the Chris Brodens and a, a couple other folks that had said, eh, I'm just not doing podcasting anymore. And it was like, oh, there's money? Hey, I'm back. Paul, you're, uh, here, for the, Paul, you're here for the money, right? I'm always here for the money, yeah. <laughs> There's so much money to be had here. I so can much see. Money to be had here. And, it's, clearly uh, the, it's clearly the play, as Paul would say. Absolutely. <laughs> not enough to get sued, though. That's the good news. Not enough to get sued. So we've heard, right? Yes. You news. make some money. Not not willing enough. Not, not enough for us to actually go after it. Let's hope that's. Uh, yeah. Anyways, we learned. You know, and it's, we, it's funny to what to, to to what Dave said. There's a parallel right now that that I, I want to draw because it's really really key right now. Most of Hollywood believes that the solution to Hollywood is to do Marvel movies, okay? And um, right now, if you want to make a movie and it's going to be successful in Hollywood, you need to make a Marvel movie. That's what everybody believes. And what's going to happen very, very soon, probably not in 2015, but in 2016, we're going to see a Marvel movie that flops. Now, nobody's going to blame it on the script. Nobody's going to blame it on the acting. Nobody's going to blame it on the directing. Nobody's going to blame it on the, the lousy special effects. They're going to go, Marvel has fallen out of favor with the audience, and they're going to stop making Marvel movies. And uh, this is exactly what's happening with podcasting. Right now, nobody can go wrong. The second somebody goes wrong, uh, podcasting is going to go out of play. And mm -hmm. um, the sad thing is, is Marvel's got a lot for us, uh, but boy, when, when the next whichever one it is, flops bad. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. I lived on the, um, I'm sorry, I worked on the 12th floor of the Portland World Trade Center, which had the uh, Portland Film Commission in it, the year that Mr. Holland's Opus came out, which was, you know, one of the big happy-go-lucky feel-good movies of the year, and all of a sudden, Portland became the place to make movies. And then, of course, the next big movie to come out of Portland was Body of Evidence with Madonna. And um, that one did not do as well. And as a result, you know, they had to break down the shop, find cheaper digs, and um, had to rent the, uh, the space to somebody else. And that's what's going to happen in podcasting. The stories are going to be, oh, this is the formula, this is the formula, this is the formula. Once the formula doesn't work, or once somebody even poorly implements the formula, they're going to go away. So I, I, think, I think Dave's dead on there. Good job, Dave. Dave, Dave's been here long enough to get one thing right. <laughs> we appreciate that. Hey, uh, Daniel, do you have another bold prediction for us? Well, I think some of these podcast companies that we see popping up here and there with hosting or with one-stop service providers or even certain other technologies that are come, I think we're going to see a lot of them fail in 2015 either fail because they didn't have a good idea, fail because they couldn't get enough money, or maybe they just give up on the idea and pursue something else. Now, we've kind of seen this all through, you know, the 14, no, 10 years, 14, what, how many years are we in here? About, uh, about 10, right? We're just past 10, 10 years. Yeah. 
have we seen this along the way the whole time, right? We oh, see yeah. podcasting companies come and go. Well, it seems that in 2014, especially, a lot of podcasting companies really popped up mm -hmm. for especially hosting and uh, content distribution channels, uh, trying to bring marketing to podcasting. And yes, there have been some that have died or gone by the wayside or been purchased by Apple, the very few, like Swell, or Stitcher being purchased by Deezer. That's not a failure. That's a success on their part because they had something great and someone bought them. So I'm not going to call that a failure or a disappearance in that sense. But something more like Mevio when they went under or you know, some of these other kinds of things. I think we'll see more of that as more companies popped up we're going to see more of them fail. Yep. Good old Padango. Um, there's already two. Um, the new one is Loverino is the name of the website. Loverino. Leave it to Dave to know. Like, wasn't that a sweat hog? Right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Loverino. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's hilarious because my favorite thing about all these hosting companies is they keep talking about features that aren't features. Like, free blogging platform. Or, we'll back up your files. I'm like, really? Um, and... Why that's not going to work, and I, I like, hey, let's try it and see if it works. It appeals to the person who doesn't have any money, so it's the person just getting into podcasts. Well, they need somebody with an audience because they're going to put ads in front of your stuff or on your website, so that doesn't work. And if you do start out and you do have content, you get lucky enough to build an audience, well, guess what? You don't need those guys anymore because you can get your own sponsors and you leave. So I think in the long run, that whole platform I mean, Mevio had, what, $27 million that they burned through before they went, yeah, never mind. So uh, it'll be interesting because I'm sure somebody's going to go, well, bandwidth is cheaper now, and they're going to you know, fire it up again. But it'll be fun to watch. So if, if we're going to talk about hosting, then this, this one will be fun. Dave, is 2015 the year of Blog Talk Radio? It's going to be interesting. I'm gonna, I have one of my He paused. He paused. Yeah. Well... I, because I've, I've seen, I've got to peek at the other side. I'm, I'm kind of under a non-disclosure, but they, they're doing some things. They're headed in the right direction. Um, it's weird when they say, we, we pulled your post and it's in the cubicle of the developer. But I really think you're going to see Blog Talk Radio. And I heard rumors, I, this is all this is, I think Spreaker is working on a call-in service. I heard them on the new media show and I thought, mm. man, if they could fire that up, that would be cool where you could take in calls on Spreaker, because both those are live platforms, and I think you're going to see those two, and those are both two companies that are constantly, you know, Blog Talk Now is redoing their guts, and Spreaker's constantly adding new features, and I think those are going to be the two that are going to rise up and say, all right, you know, everybody wants to be Rush Limbaugh and Dave Ramsey, and I want to take call-ins, and I think those two are going to, you know, it's going to be, ooh, wow, Blog Talk Radio is in the lead now, and then somebody else. I don't know if they'll ever compete with just a, quote, media host for those people that don't want to because I think you're going to end up paying premium for that but that's one of my predictions I think you're going to see those two just duke it out it's going to be fun to watch yeah I mean that kind of has a little overlap Steve with your prediction of more live content right so live not necessarily being a podcast but we're recording an audio podcast live or are we doing a video show that has that is published to a podcast stream Paul does not care Right, Paul? Paul likes Spreaker. He doesn't care where the heck we are putting our content as long as we're putting it everywhere. I don't know. I'm put, now I'm putting words into to Paul's mouth. But, Paul, give us one of those predictions that people aren't going to like. Um, all right. I got, I got three. <laughs> um, I think I'll go off of Daniel here. Um, number two was that a number of pointless podcast in a box products will launch. Hmm. And um, it isn't the tech. It's never been the tech. And that's the thing that people forget. And then when you go hit history, like Dave said, people with a lot more money have failed a lot bigger, a lot faster, you know, which is great news. Um, if we look at Mevio um, on one side, on the tech side of things, we look at when, when CBS tried to take over Rocket Boom and brought Joanne out <laughs> west coast. Um, you, you know, the, these podcast in the box products are going to launch. And the thing is, is I don't really care about 
how much they charge for bandwidth or some of the things that we love to argue with. I just care that some really well-meaning people get sucked into these things and then it becomes an absolute pain in the butt and they associate podcasting with a, a less than stellar experience and they report that back to their hierarchies. You know, I think that's, I think that's where the danger is. You know, um, they add steps to the process that simply don't have to be there. They add limitations to the process that simply don't have to be there. And um, that gets frustrating. But yeah, I like to be, anybody will take my content and put it out there. I, I love them because that's how I build my list. That's how I build my audience. And that's how I build what it is that I'm doing. I, I, I'm not running, you know, ads for, you know, feminine hygiene stuff inserted by some random third party person. But that's, you know, for at least what I'm doing, not where the money is. You you Paul, brought up I rocket boobs. You. Oh, go ahead, Dan. Uh, yeah, before the, the rocket boob thing, you're talking about um, the podcast in a box stuff, and you said it's not about the tech. And I know you say that a lot in the podcast report, but it, I think it could be argued in one way that, and maybe we're defining podcast in a box separately. But what if the podcast in a box idea? whether that be actual a physical box, like I know Adam Curry was working on something or it be some software application. What if that enables people to then not have to worry about the tech at all, that they get this thing and it enables them to produce something in very high quality, but then allows them to focus entirely on the content and not have to worry about the tech at all. It, uh, uh, what do you think? If that happens, then my prediction was a number of pointless podcast in a box uh, yeah. launch. You, you, you know, right if there, we right. have a legitimate, nice podcast in a box, I'm all for it. But, but, but the problem is, you know, you look at what Adam did and, and or what Adam tried to do, and, and it, it, it was great. You look at what others have tried to do, it's great. The problem is, is a, a, a legitimate, real podcast in a box is not going to promise you untold riches in the first month. Yeah. As soon as you start doing seven podcasts a week with the word on fire at the end. <laughs> well, this roundtable is on fire. All right, so let's not get carried away because I'm pumped. Anyways, good job, you guys. It's wrong. I, don't, I don't know how to be motivational. I'm sorry. I tried it. This show is clearly doomed to fail. Can I sign up for the list? Yes, Dave. I'm going to piggyback on pointless. Um, players, players, and more players. Because in the end... Oh, that's I it. Yes, Dave. We need the best player. Let's have a player shootout. You know, let's have, let's have the next ten episodes of the podcast roundtable be podcast player shootout. I right. do it's like a nice looking player, right. <laughs> but it's it's power press versus simple podcast press versus what's the new one? Podcaster Pro something? Procaster. Procaster. Procast. Soon to be, you know, money cast followed by, you know, Aircast. Hey, you guys, you will get more listens if your player is better. Come on. It's got to be yes, true, right? That is. And did you guys see the video from Alex Bloomberg where his grandmother's there and he's talking about a podcast? And her advice is go to the website, press Ira Glass. play. That Ira was Ira Glass. Glass. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yes, that's a good yeah. one. That's a good one. So it clearly works. The players are clearly work. But hey, throw back to the Rocket Boom thing, which was, which was cool memory back then. Are we going to see more podcasts transition to, you know, what we say, you know, is old media and does when old media comes in and says, we, we want to be in this space, we're going to take this podcast and make it, you know, make it our own or, or basically just take it, buy it. And it's, it's a different, like a big, I'm trying to say like a big overlord CBS type. It's their property. Do they ruin it? What happened in that case? Are we going to see more podcasts? Transition, or or is old media going to have to start playing in our sandbox? What, any thoughts about what I'm muddling through there? Well, I, I got I, one. Anybody go, go, Dave. Well, I just know I have a couple people that are starting to freak out because they've been paying for time on AM radio and a lot of money, in my opinion. And I'm like, well, just for the record, unless you want to really go hyper local, uh, you can go global for about a tenth of that price and they're like what um so i think in some cases the uninformed you know that figures out that even though it's not quote radio that they're really content producers i think we're going to pull you know the those kind of people that are on saturday morning at 10 in the morning on you know whatever those people at least i found a couple that they're they were just like you're kidding me you know they're paying more or less almost 500 dollars an episode and it's like oh you got to be kidding me and so I think we might see – now, that's not a ton of people, and if they do, who's going to know because who's listening to AM radio? But I'm surprised that I found a couple, and they're that slowly now 
that little AM radio uh, click of people are starting to tell each other, have you heard about this podcasting thing? So that's one way I see where, where media and, and podcasting are going to swap some personnel. Paul, what did you have? You know, the Joanne Colin story from Rocket Boom, you've got to be very, very careful because um, Andrew did not sell Rocket Boom to CBS. Joanne jumped ship and went to CBS, and they basically stole the idea or attempted to steal the idea from him, and it failed miserably. And the thing is, there's some stuff you can do with podcasting that you can't do in traditional media, and that's part of podcasting strength. And that's the thing that everybody forgets about. And that's the thing that is going to take us um, to the next level, and that's what allows us, you know, enables us to get CPMs considerably higher than what traditional new media takes. So you take something awesome, and then you plug it into an old media infrastructure, and in the old days, there used to be a time when the finest thing that a podcaster could do would be on Sirius XM with the Podfather, <laughs> you know, at 2.30 in the morning. And, and we, have, we have grown up. And, and, and the cool thing is right now, most big companies are realizing that, uh, you know, there's nothing that NPR can offer Serial. There's nothing that Comedy Central can offer Marin. You know, there's nothing that these people can offer them right now um, other than an additional show, an additional vehicle. And as they start to build out the empire, you're going to see a lot more of that. But right now, um, the guys who are really knocking it out of the park right now, I mean, th there's no offer that anybody could give to Dumas that would do better than he's doing right now. There, you know, there would be a legitimate real offer from a company that still has to be beholden to its shareholders. And so we have crossed the chasm there. I don't think we're going to see as much uh, old media intrusion in, in the new media just because they don't have um, what we have anymore. And um, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. You heard it here. Podcasting in 2015 is better than TV, radio, well, newspapers. We when win. I, no. When I had Jordan Harbinger on my show, he had a satellite show, and when he walked in and said, I have a podcast, he said they were not happy to hear that. And in, in time, I mean, they had a drive time yeah. slot, and they just figured out that, you know, we don't really need you guys. And that's why they're not on the series anymore. <laughs> they're like, forget it. Yeah, that show does real well. It's always in the top of uh, – Top charts there in iTunes, which we know is most important. Oh, Steve, <laughs> Steve, uh, you're boring me, buddy. Give me a good prediction. <laughs> uh, well, I could tease you with one, but I'll save that for later. If, you, if you're just going to sit there, you should dance around the hotel room. It's not yours. Trash the place. Yeah. Rock and roll, baby. Let's do this. <laughs> you know, uh, Dave stole one of mine, which was a podcast media player. But uh, I, I do. You were talking about a negative, having Paul talk about a negative thing, and, and I think it's going to definitely be a fallout. Uh, of people who are tried podcasting this year thought they could make a lot of money in it. It's going to give podcasting a bad name, a bad taste mm -hmm. in their mouths. I think there's going to be a backlash from that. I'd hate to see it. Uh, I think we'll come back from it, but I think 2015 we're going to see that 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 dip in the interest from people starting shows, even though there's going to be more people starting with a different mindset, a different type of show, I think, in 2015. So you think the front page of Slate is going to be how podcasting has failed instead of like, was it today or yesterday? Like almost the front whole front page of Slate was like hey, hey, podcasting. Podcast articles. failing is an easy story. Get ready for it. <laughs> there will be one in 2015, my friend. And, and there will be a renaissance of podcasting in 2015, won't there? It'll come I, back. <laughs> I picked the time. I said May 2015. Podcasting will be dead because it's too much work, which is really the same story. They're just going to dust it off. Dust even it off. though... One of my other predictions is we're going to see more and more companies offering to do your show notes and your editing. I think you're going to see a lot of those pop up right next to the podcast host because they're already popping up. It's just nobody can figure out what to charge at this point. So I, th I, think, I think as more and more come on, they're all going to get together and, you know, in a hangout and say, what are we going to charge? But I think you're going, going to see back more. To, going back to Steve's point, I, that's something else that I was thinking of too, that we'll see more top podcasters or – let's not say podcasters, but top broadcasters give up on podcasting for their show. Like in 20, I think it was 2013, maybe even 2014, Rhett and Link, they were, they're in the top 10 channels on YouTube uh, with their Rhett and Link Good Mythical Morning show that they host a daily show on YouTube. They stopped their video podcast because they said the video podcast wasn't paying the bills, uh, they were getting free media hosting for that video, and 
it was going to start costing them and they just couldn't balance things out with the video version here they're doing the exact same amount of production it's just they decided to shut down a particular channel uh, ask a ninja same thing where he was interviewed on new media show recently one of the founders of ask a ninja and he said that the podcasting idea maybe not quite as strong for them it's more youtube as a major platform for them with video and there have been several others like that doing video shows where it seems like they're giving up on video podcasting in favor of youtube well if the game is is ad insertion youtube is the way to go Period. If that's a game, I, I mean, free hosting, universal accessibility, and you know, some random person adds ads to your show. Um, it's it's very profitable if that is your game, and you don't have to call people, you don't have to do anything. You just put it up, they put ads on it, and they put a deposit into your bank account. So if that's the game, YouTube is the way to do it. Why don't we see? Why don't we see that in podcasting? Audio podcasting. There are companies that do that. Audiometric does that. Libsyn can even do that. If Why is it not successful it. then? I think it goes back to uh, what Slate basically uh, wrote about. I think it was just today or yesterday published an article talking about how podcast sponsorship spots are very different, but they work a lot better because they're host endorsed and sometimes the hosts will have fun with it and over deliver on a podcast ad. Whereas if there's some auto inserted 30 second ad, people are most likely going to skip that. Yeah. And so is it just the massive numbers, Paul, we, on YouTube? Is that why that works? Because it's, it's nameless. It's, you know, the host isn't there doing it, but it works for some people. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I'm not saying it's necessarily good for the advertisers. I'm just saying it's easy. And um, you got to be careful there. You know, the thing about audio podcasting is those with the numbers to make it happen are just are, are getting their own ads. It's back to what Dave said a little bit earlier. The people who don't, the people who need the big companies, the big companies can't scale to provide, and those who don't need them go away and leave. You know, you, you know Leo and and Five by Five and 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 some of these you know huge tech guys. You know, they have full people on staff to to negotiate this stuff. So there's there's no industry and poor. You know, poor Rob. Rob gets a call from a guy who says, hey, I'm doing this show. It's going to be on fire. There's going to be seven episodes a week. And, you know, I need to make, you know, about 100000 a month after about six months. Can you help me out, Rob? And and Rob is just like, I, I can't, you know, uh, unless you do the downloads. And so then they start Twitter bombing. The downloads aren't real, and they see no results. And, and, and Rob goes, hey, I'm sorry. I can't do this. So so the problem is is the, the early dream of the Mevio, you know, quit your day job days where you throw up your show and they're going to find the right people, add it to you. You know, that was never realistic. Um, that was never going to happen. It never happened and it never will happen. And once we stop giving up that dream, I, I think podcast will be in a much better place. All right. Someone throw out another prediction. We are in the final, you know, about 20 minutes here. So let's start rattling them off. Who's got something good? I want to throw one because I want to hear some, some, some thoughts yes. here. Yes. Big announcements will have minimal show results. Everybody's been excited. Spotify is going to do podcasting and, and the, um, you know, the podcast app on iOS and, and everybody's making these big, huge announcements. It's going to have minimal show results. People are going to go, my God, why isn't my podcast getting more listens now that podcast app is on iPhone? So uh, big announcements, minimal individual show results. Panel? That's, have I have we, a, go ahead, I have, Dave. I have CarPlay. Big deal. Yeah. Because now, I mean, when I get my car... My, my car fires up my phone and connects via Bluetooth. I could care less what I have in my dashboard. It's tying into my phone. So when CarPlay comes out, I would think most of the people that are buying a car that has Apple CarPlay probably already have an Apple on their phone. And I'm like, so it's going to be like, hey, we're in CarPlay, and it didn't make the needle move. It's yeah. the – it's the uh, it's sort of the – sort of the um – it's the big, the big thing we've been talking about forever, right? When cars get in, in the dashboard and it's easy, game over. We own the space, right? No, we don't. We know we don't. It doesn't. It, it's easier to listen now, but you still got to know what to listen to. You still got to know that there's something to listen to. Um, right. Has, um, anyone, has any, any of these past tech evolutions, no. has, you know, has that we've seen, I, I guess for an individual show, probably not. It's not going to make much of it. It may help podcasting along the way, right? We've seen growth, slow and steady. Right. But 
for no single show, Paul, what you're saying is that yeah. you're not going to then suddenly have an avalanche of new listeners. Mm-hmm. Spotify added podcasting. I'm finally rich. <laughs> and now Pandora, who I found out today is like 20 million in debt or something like that. I forget where I read that. So I'm like going, so it would not be surprising. I, it was because uh, I'm now sure, sure. Is now iHeartMedia. If you didn't know that, and I, you know, if you didn't realize this, the reason why they said, "Hey, come put your podcast on iHeartRadio," they need listeners to throw ads in front of. It's the same thing, and so, you know, again, I, I get some listens on iHeartRadio, but it wasn't like, "Oh my gosh, I'm going to get a real," you know, "I'm going to get on the the real radio now because I'm on iHeart." No, I'm not. And but how many of those iHeartRadio listeners are existing listeners who are now listening to you on iHeartRadio? That's a good question. Are it's, you implying that they find us and go somewhere else? No, I, I, I'm implying that we've got a listener base who listen a lot of different ways. And mm. um, when somebody adds a new way, there might be somebody really excited about CarPlay who suddenly starts listening to Dave on CarPlay. But that's just, you know, he's got an audience member who's a nerd, not a platform suddenly brought us a new audience. There are podcasters out there who firmly believe that once we went to iOS 8 and we put podcast on the iPhone, that everything would change and that they would get rich off of it. And it just ain't going to happen. It didn't happen. It's not going to happen. And um, it's just like thinking once somebody announces a new browser, suddenly my website's going to get more visits. Mm-hmm. You know, we got to realize that these new plays are just like Dave said. You know, it's Pandora looking for free content. You know, it's iHeartRadio looking for free content. So they can wrap ads around it and, and make it attractive for some. So is so so does twenty fifteen is that is twenty fifteen just another year in the slow progression of podcasts or do we do we actually see something? Can we just have fun and guess there is some point, I guess what would be jumping the shark, where podcasting does become T V, radio, you know, it's just right alongside. Right? Is that kind of what we're waiting for? Everyone listens to podcasts. Is this medium open that, to everybody? For, for, for podcasting to take off and be universal, it's going to have to take something like when iTunes put podcasts into their, their desktop app. It's going to have to take something like that. Right now, I still think this is, and this sounds horrible, but podcasting to many is still kind of like CB radio. Uh, you know, it's still this small thing. And it's, you know, how many podcasters do you hear interviewing other people who have podcasts. I do it all the time, and it drives me crazy. When I do it, I'm like, ah, I should get somebody who people don't already know and let them discover. So once once it gets to be where you know I can touch a button and podcasts come up automatically, that might just be the trigger for a new listener. But as far as massive audience, I don't know. What do you guys think? What's it going to take to to blow it out of the water? Are we talk radio? Is that not necessarily a massive audience doesn't necessarily exist? I mean, there may be X amount of people who listen to talk radio and then saturated, right? Do podcasts have a mass media appeal? I don't know if I'd agree with that. I think people in general, I mean, when you're young, you listen to a lot of music. You don't listen to talk. But when you start to mature and you want to learn something, podcasting, obviously, with that niche uh, you know, message, you can get people who can listen to a show and learn something that they can use in their business and their trade, whatever, and, and their hobbies. So there's, you know, there's going to be a maturing audience. I think that's going to grow into podcasting. It's not going to be, you know, we're not going to get 15 year olds to listen to podcasts anytime soon. That I can and that, think of. That, that's sense. what I mean. We're sort of we, we're sort of stuck in a demographic, right? I mean, it's not going to. We don't see it growing past those sort of walls that or, or kind of it's already defined itself as. I think on this. <laughs> thing that Serial has brought a lot more attention to audio drama and podcasting, which, by the way, has been done before with huge success. Like We Are Alive had huge success in the audio drama space and podcasting. But I think that kind of thing will appeal a lot to the younger generation. As look at the biggest audio drama with a child appeal, Adventures in Odyssey. It's a Christian audio drama from Focus on the Family. It's designed for kids. It's been consumed by kids for I don't know how many years now. I grew up listening to Adventures in Odyssey. I miss listening to Adventures in Odyssey because I still enjoy the series. But I think that kind of drama, the exciting, entertaining thing, is what will get the younger generation into the podcasting space to consume content. And as they become older, then it will become their new 
place that they go when they want to learn something else or when they want extra content. Do, do we care as individual content producers? Do we care uh, beyond our own, who, our audience, right? We, who's, is it our responsibility to drive, uh, you know, new audiences to podcasting or, you know, are we good just sticking with what we got? In 2015, you know, is it our goal? Do, do we care about getting outside of what we're already doing? says the guy who is with a panel with two other founders of national podcast day international <laughs> podcast day i care but yeah. my show yeah. my show my content is sort of based on podcasters right so i i would love to get more people in the space i love people starting new shows but that's mm -hmm. my niche do regular podcasters people who don't live in our bubble you know if they have a, if you have a comedy show do you care and it's not meant for kids right i don't know any thoughts on growing the space in 2015 or do we just sort of grow our content? What's more important? I think every podcaster should care about getting more people into consuming podcasts, not just for their own show, but to say something like, uh, hey, I have this show about this topic, but what are you interested in? Let's see if there's a show about that. Let me show you about this. And that would get more people into this, starting the conversation about podcasting. That sounds like national pod, international podcast day, uh, international podcast day.com. Check it out. Go find a show you love. Podcasting is two things. And we forget this a lot. It's, it's a channel for delivery and it's a format. And sometimes we'll take a radio show and PR and we'll, we'll send it down the channel of podcasting. And then sometimes we'll take a, a, a thing like this, very much a podcast and we'll shoot it down the podcasting channel as well. We need to take a look at, at, at these two completely independent things because uh, uh, first we just have uh, independent media production at its absolute finest. You know, when, when I'm one of those 97 million Americans driving by myself in my car to work, I got 10 choices to listen to on the radio and maybe four of them are talk. With the world of podcasting, I got any niche, anything I want. And, and that is, is the channel of podcasting that's so incredibly powerful. And then we have the, the, the format which, um, you know, you look at, at, at Serial or, or you look at what John's done or that type of thing that's interesting. I think what happens, we get in trouble when we, when we blend the two and we speak of the two as if they're the same thing. It is incredibly empowering to tell anyone who has ears that they can listen to what they want to listen to on their own terms. That's an incredibly powerful message. And um, when that word gets out and becomes easier and easier, we're going to do better. Um, TiVo didn't win. Uh, TiVo lost. I, I think TiVo's still losing money, but, but the whole world time shifts now. We DVR everything because of that technology, and that's exactly what podcasting is going to come. I remember about five, six years ago, I got in the car with my kid, and I said, oh, I forgot my iPod. And she goes, well, what are we going to do? You know, and she was, like, scared. And I said, well, we'll listen to radio. And she says, what's radio? I'm like, oh, wow, how cool. What a good dad am I. And, <laughs> and you know, and I said, you know, I was trying to think, we're always talking about how do we describe podcast to radio listeners, but how do we describe radio to podcast listeners is an entirely different thing. I said, well, radio is kind of like somebody else chooses what we listen to. And she looks at me, she goes, well, why would we do that? <laughs> you know, which is exactly what podcasting is. And so the second somebody realizes they can listen to what they want to listen to when they listen to it, we're going to do incredibly well. Doesn't mean we're going to get a quarter of a million listeners. Doesn't mean we're going to get 100 CPM, but it means the people want to listen to what it is that we have to say. They're going to be able to find us, and that's where podcasting is. So the channel still has a lot of growth to do. I think we all do better if we evangelize it. But Dave's evangelism at the ball game is just as popular as you know getting on local drive time radio for 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 the drive home. And I really think it's important to distinguish between these two. Who, who thinks Google is going to come to the party? Uh, I have that down. Google will do nothing for podcasters. But I think somebody's going to take a run at the Android market because I just heard where Beyond Pod came out with a new interface and they kind of ruined their app from what I've heard. Now, I don't know if that's just human beings hating change, which probably is a lot of that. But with Stitcher, what do you guys think about Stitcher? Is Stitcher going up or down? Um, I can't figure out what the Deezer move is. I heard they were kind of losing money, so I'm like, eh, that's not good to hear. But there's just so much, like, Anybody, take a shot at the Android market, please. It's wide open. Do something there because Google's not. And I just don't know. You know, we had uh, 
what's the one guy from the invented paper and the podcast app? It's orange. Overcast, is that it? Mm, yeah, Marco. Marco. Podcast you know, app, that's we orange. need a Marco to do something on the Android side. Um, but I don't know that that... Would it matter? I mean, like, what is, what's the problem there? That is a good question. What? Why is Android broken? And and Rob will tell you because people that buy Android phones use it to talk, and people that buy an iPhone use it to do stuff. But I don't know. It's weird. I just I'm I'm excited because it's like wow, there's room for five thousand percent improvement over there. But nobody knows how to fix it because it's not really broken according to Google. All right. So Google will do nothing in 2015. Who's got yeah. another one? Anybody disagree with that? It's hard to disagree with that. If anything, they will probably cripple FeedBurner even more. <laughs> <laughs> Here's to that one. Okay, so let's the, in the next hour, we're going to talk about how to get away from... Fe oh, no, sorry. Wrong show. <laughs> I want to bore Paul out of his I th eyeballs. I thought it was a player shootout. You know, JavaScript, good or bad. So who's got another... Give me another one. I'll give you another one. 5,000 new seven-day-a-week podcasts with the word on fire in the title. I thought, I thought we already went there. I thought, uh, seriously. Hey, Paul, were you at Podcast Movement? <laughs> I, no, no. Um, this year, we're going to see a lot of people who believe there's a, there's a five-step formula to success. We're going to see a lot of people who believe there's a five-step formula to success. And the funny thing is, is um, they're not even um, necessarily listening to some of the people who are selling formulas for podcast success. You know, you know, you know they, they think, not, you know, if, if they buy the program, they're suddenly there. And, and what's going to happen is, is we're going to see a lot of people throwing a lot of time, effort, and money, and podcasting is going to get very, very, very muddy in 2015. And a lot of people who have their first experience in podcasting in 2015, it's going to be an ugly, muddy mess. And we're going to have a lot of people whose first experience is going to be pretty bad and we've got you know we're gonna have to deal with that um we're gonna see people who uh yeah i tried podcasting Blech. um that's gonna be a huge thing in 2015 yeah well yeah, i mentioned podcast movement and I, I didn't mean to say it negatively in 2015 i can predict you might see most of this round table at podcast movement paul i don't know if you'll be there but I am. certainly dave is heading up new media expo what, what? for 2015 that's gonna be awesome so uh, podcasting prediction for 2015 you'll see a lot of these faces i'm the there. track leader for the podcasting track at social media marketing world so yeah, there's another one well, so more podcasting conferences will we see another podcasting conference in 2015 yeah. does all this hype machine will this gather us in a new city across the across the world i guess well the uk mike russell isabel they're starting up uh a, a conference there in the UK. New Media yeah. Europe. Or they yeah. already did one. They already did one of them, right? Because yeah. it did a video. So that was successful. So, hey, maybe it'll grow past. Will podcasting get bigger in other countries? Anyone think that'll happen? Yeah, I, I know think so. In, is it in fact, just uh, I've been noticing with my podcast reviews, the service I create that sends international reviews, I've been surprised to see. I'm getting a lot of international customers. I thought it would be more the Americans who want to see the international reviews, but it's a lot of international people who want to see the American reviews since they're producing a podcast in their own separate country, in their own iTunes store, and they know that most of their audience is in the U.S. I'd like to see it spread out where, yeah, more and more countries are adopting this technology to be able to send out these messages in their own languages, not trying to appeal at all to an American audience, but appealing to their own audiences in their own countries. Well, I'm working, I'm, 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 I'm executive producer of a podcast that has um, dozens of downloads in Turkmenistan, a, a country that uh, doesn't allow Twitter, doesn't allow YouTube, doesn't allow Facebook, yet this, this podcast is reaching uh, Turkmenistan, and it's 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 really really interesting. I think you're seeing um, a lot of American shows with international play, a lot of international play external as well. So yeah, I, I I think you're right. Cool. Anyone anyone else have something lingering on their list that they want to get before we do one more little segment before we head out? Well, here? I want to I want to jump on to something that Paul was talking about. Where we're talking about uh, you know all these people coming on board with the On Fire thing. I think the theme, you know, we, we saw these people come up and they did interview shows, mostly about small business entrepreneurship, things like that. Uh, I think what you're going to see is people coming on to do audio blogs. 
you know, taking written content they already have, jumping into the audio space, maybe putting up some videos on YouTube. I think it's going to be rehashing some old content, putting it into a rich media type, and uh, and that's going to get them into the podcasting space. Whether it's successful for them or not, that remains to be seen. But I think that's where we're going to get the newest people jumping into the space. Interesting. Yeah, I think we'll see more podcasters dip their toe into to video. I mean, this is an easy way, right? Talking head, but actually shooting and making video to get to in front of that YouTube crowd. I hope so. I, I'm a big fan of video. So if you want to learn how to produce video, go check out my channel. But uh, yeah, so I think more podcasters, you know, video just, um, it's so weird, right? That we have each, each sort of, um, the way we deliver content, video versus audio, they each have, they've each really been successful on their own, right? So YouTube has sort of been, it's sort of like podcasting YouTube, YouTube just took off, right? A lot of people, but at the same time, you know, as if you talk to, I guess, Rob Gruning, he's always saying that a lot of times you don't see the YouTubers coming over to podcasting and having that same type of success, right? So I'm wondering how many more, uh, you know, if we'll see that sort of transition, will podcasters move over to, uh, to, to YouTube and vice versa? Or do you think it'll just sort of, we'll say splintered off as video people stay over here? Because video podcasting, I mean, that's, I don't know about you guys, but I don't, I don't, almost don't consume any. I had to go back. I started consuming that way in the beginning, and then I sort of dropped off. I did sort of consume more YouTube. I don't see, uh, video podcasts seem to have, I don't know the numbers, but they seem to have just dove. A- they took a dive since the beginning. I know we've, I, I couldn't name them, but I've heard of people that they go, oh, well, so-and-so start a podcast and I'm like yeah and they go oh well, he's a big YouTuber so I've heard a couple names I couldn't tell you what they were that have started a podcast I don't know if they're successful or not but I, I know some people are, are at least putting their toe in that water in the same way that many podcasters are trying out YouTube yeah because I don't see that I don't see that the the ability to do a video podcast it doesn't really exist like where are you gonna host that stuff and not yeah. pay mm-hmm. HD video for an hour that's why people are on YouTube. There's that doesn't exist for for yeah. podcasts. I yeah, and I think that we'll see podcasting become more of an audio thing. In fact, a very prominent podcaster who recently started a podcast about podcasting called podcasts audio content. And this person didn't even include video. And I think that's the direction that we'll be headed because of these things, the expenses, the audience. And just think about the way that people approach content. When people go to YouTube, they're searching for something. They find a video that meets that thing. YouTube is very viral. It's very shareable. A podcast currently, at least, is not very shareable, especially audio where you can't really tell where to jump to in a certain spot or things like that. So I think we'll see that divide between video and audio going that video goes in the direction of YouTube or other platforms and audio or podcasting becomes more audio focused. Yeah, it feels like it's been that way for a long time, but that's where I want to see Google. That's that's what I want to see Google do is why aren't why when I do a search and someone has done an on, an hour long deep dive on how to do compression for your podcast, which I did, you know, why isn't Google saying, "Man, here is some really rich content." Um, and it could even chapter mark it if you did that in your show notes or something. I would like to see Google show podcasts in search results because um, a, a, they, it's new content, it's hard to generate. Um, there is so much deep information for someone that's looking for something specific. And wow, I mean, imagine all the new shows you would come across, you would find if Google started saying, hey, well, here's a show all about that. And not a show, an episode. Here's an episode all about that. Well, the reason that Google prioritizes YouTube is because, one, they own YouTube. Well, yeah, YouTube. But even they even dropped their prior... It seemed like they prioritized YouTube a little less in the last few years. Um, Um, Well, they've changed how YouTube videos embedded on your pages appear. You can no longer do certain video meta tags with your SEO. But still, YouTube results, like one of the things that I search for, because I'm on the front page of it, clean comedy. If you search just clean comedy and Google the first two or three results will be YouTube videos. And then there are a couple uh, websites after that. Yeah. Um, you, YouTube, YouTube doesn't index audio podcast because um, an audio podcast takes consumption of uh, longer than about 30 seconds, which means people will see it, they'll click back, and Google res- will see that as, as a bad result. That, that's just the nature 
of of the game. Uh, you put the transcript up, it changes instantly. And um, it's just not that big of a deal. Google's job is to send people to sites where they stay the longest, and they stay the longest on YouTube right now. Uh, that's where they put YouTube up at the top. Uh, the, the question of video podcast that we got to go back right now, as of the time of this recording, the number eight episode inside of management marketing, which is my category, is a uh, video podcast. And the funny thing is, is the video podcast is about YouTube of all things. And this actual episode about YouTube has about 25 times as many downloads of the podcast as this video actually has up in YouTube, okay? So the video on YouTube, you multiply that by about 25 times, and that's how many times the episode's been downloaded for the podcast. Um, I'm doing no marketing of this podcast. I'm doing nothing but good SEO. And I'm doing, so this is people typing in the stuff and coming in to take a look at it. After announcing it here on this show, um, I'll, I'll skew my numbers a little bit. But the fact of the matter is, um, video podcasting is a great place to put your video right now because there is so much noise over at YouTube, and there are a lot of people who are searching their Apple TVs, who are searching their iPads um, and iTunes for content. You'd be surprised what they'd find. Cool. Mm-hmm. I'm a fan of that. I'm a, as an original OG video podcaster, come now, on over, you know, Daniel. Mentioning searching your iPad or iPhone, that does bring up something where video podcasts or just podcasts in general will get higher promotion is that now with iOS 8, if you search inside of Safari or if you just search inside Spotlight, sometimes, depending on the search algorithm you use or the term you use, sometimes a podcast will be recommended in the search results by the Spotlight, which is the system-wide search, or Safari when you're searching for a web page, it will recommend a podcast sometimes, and it's very picky, but it does happen. Well, and I know Daniel said that with audio, it's not as shareable, but if you buy the new Supercast on Fire player, <laughs> it will be. <laughs> I buy that for a dollar. All right, so let's move on, wrapping up here, personal predictions, all right? What will you be doing in podcasting in 2015? All right, so uh, Steve, you're up first. Pressure cooker. Uh, well, actually, I just launched a second podcast with a group of financial coaches that I joined and went with. So uh, it, that's actually just starting to roll out now. So 2015, continuing Money Plan SOS, but also growing an audience over at Financial Wellness Show. And what's your hope for your podcast in 2015? What are you trying to do? Uh, I'm trying to reach people. I'm trying to reach people the message about getting out of debt. And whether it's to make money or not, it doesn't matter. It's, it's the whole message of getting people to pay attention to their finances so they don't pay interest. Odd that a guy who talks about getting out of debt would do a podcast. <laughs> it's just a money pit. It's a big Tom <laughs> Hanks money pit. Of, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, Dave Jackson, 2015 personal podcasting prediction. Uh, Going to bring back my small group like classes. My, I, last year I did my six weeks to a podcast class. I want to bring that back in a, a slightly different fashion. Um, and I might break out the school of podcasting into an a la carte mode where you'll have the membership site, but if you really just want to learn about planning your podcast, here you go. Cool. And you've got NMX. And I have NMX, which, uh, yeah, so that's going to be fun. I'll be bald by the end of it, so that'll be fun. And, um, that that in itself is just um, boy. Talk about talk about walking into the complete unknown. How is that going to ch- is that going to change anything? I mean, what's that going to do for podcasters? Because we're joining up. We I say we like as if I have anything to do with it. Podcast New Media Expo is joining up with NAB, right? So two worlds collide. NAB is a monster compared to pod- New Media. So is it going to be you know when those two worlds collide? Is somebody going to get a radio gig, or is radio going to get more involved in podcasting? Is it peanut butter and chocolate? Or is it, you know, fish sticks and chocolate? One mesh is really good, one not so much, and that's the unknown part. Yeah, most likely, like Paul, you know, we, like Paul says, maybe a little. There'll be a little, I don't know what you say about that, but the whole idea of, you know, it's not the next coming of your mass audience. Bring a few more people over, right? Continue to grow. Paul, podcast predictions for 2015 for yourself. So I'm doing something I swore I'd never do. Um, last week I pre-released a book on Amazon called How to Podcast. Um, it made it to number one in three countries. 
just on the pre-release, just on, on the promise and, and a little bit of marketing. Uh, it's how to podcast in four steps. Um, I'm going to try to change the dialogue. Um, everybody on the round table here is invited to be part of it. Um, you guys all listen to my shows, so you know what I'm trying to do with it. Um, my goal in, in 2015 is to just change the dialogue. Stop making it complicated. Um, there, there are times to have the microphone wars, and there are times to go deep dive into all the tech, but uh, get your first episode out first. And so um, I, I predict the book's going to do really well. Um, I predict there's going to be a lot of dialogue, and, and hopefully there will be a, a um, refocusing of the story. And um, my big dream, you know, going with these lazy journalists is just, wow, you can podcast in four steps, and here's the number one top-selling book that teaches you how to do it. So I would love anybody who listens to the show, wants to be part of it, be part of it. I'd love any of you guys to be part of it, but um, I'm going to try to change the dialogue And um, in 2015. It's, it's a hairy, audacious goal, but I'm going for it. Yeah, the Paul Paul's entry into the podcast, uh, I guess about podcasting podcast report is he's 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 not the uh he's not the Dave Jackson or the Ray Ortega Daniel Lewis. He's not talking about I don't be you microphones. Guys. Good. I'd be not <laughs> if, if I tried to be one of you guys. Cuz find that niche that nobody's got. It's cuz we only talk about microphones, Paul. If, <laughs> have I told you about the one I'm holding right now? No, tell me about it's it. It's amazing. It'll yeah. change your show. No. It won't. No, we are. Uh, we enjoy. We will see more podcasts about podcasting coming to space, Absolutely. and uh, hopefully, uh, I don't, go away. We'll see some come. We'll see some more go away, and uh, Dave will be the only one here. But uh, <laughs> saying the Dave, same thing. It started with Dave. Dave's just going to close it out. Arm wrestle him to the ground. He'll be last. Mic drop, <laughs> and we'll be done with podcasting. I predict it's over. Podcasting is dead in 2015. You heard it. That's right. <laughs> is that going to give me a lot? Is that going to get is someone going to write about me now? All right, maybe not. Leo will give. Well, Leo will handle that for us. We're yeah. all going to be. We're all going to be online streaming casters. When are we going to change the name, please? <laughs> That's a joke, people. That's a joke. Easy. All right, Daniel. Podcast personal podcast prediction for 2015. I predict I will start a show called the Fish Sticks and Chocolate on yeah. Fire podcast. Did you? Uh, I died. Seven days a week. Seven days a week of interviewing. Yeah, <laughs> people who love fish sticks. Now, um, I, I will announce this prediction for myself. I may start an experimental five day a week video podcast. That won't be just me. Ah, a vi okay. So and. That's nice and vague for you do what yeah i was gonna say do you want to tell us will, will it be a podcast about podcasts are you going to be the new podcast about podcasts i'll save that for the after show okay. but um something i can say is in 2015 i'm planning on making more products for podcasters products and services some of them free some of them premium that will help them podcast better that will help them with stuff like i've got this upcoming product seo for podcasters i've got other products in mind that will be a thorough training a la carte sort of like dave was mentioning that i'm breaking out a lot of the content i shared in my previous podcast masterclass, and we'll turn it into individual products that will be a lot of niche training on something very thorough and also other services like with my podcast reviews i have plans to expand that maybe do some other services i already launched phase two of podcastplaces.com that now includes podcasts and blogs about podcasting and there are some other ways that i'll be expanding that in 2015 so personal predictions for 2015 is it's just really just marketing predictions for everyone. It's it's plug plug your podcast. No, that is the whole point, and that is the reward for spending so much time here with me, which I appreciate. The chat room rocking it once again. Daniel well, hinted as a promo there. Dave, you need to be quiet. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Dave, I got I got Dave. Daniel hinted at a cool thing. He said he will he will tell us about that in the post show, and that is one of the reasons why you want to get on the roundtable because what happens when I hit stop broadcast and and Google. Frightenly tells us we've been terminated. It literally tells us that, people. It says when you end a hangout, your hangout is you've been terminated, whatever, something like that. It's scary. But um, Google, you've already, I've already given you permission to take over my life. And, uh, <laughs> and anyways, you want to sign up over at Podcast Roundtable because there is that, that, uh, that sort of behind the scenes conversation where people are willing to say more off the record. And when you get to be in that after a round, then you get to hear some interesting stuff. So sign up at podcastersroundtable.com. And uh, Dave, I will give a personal podcast prediction, uh, but Dave clearly wanted to say something. 
That was it. I was trying to say, Ray, you forgot to do your own personal podcast. Uh, yeah, you know, something. I think I had one person on on uh, in, a, in a comment one time say, "Ray, you shouldn't give any feedback. You're the host, man. Just <laughs> just guide the conversation." So I was like, uh, "But no, you know, I'm kidding. I do give feedback. Uh, the best part about podcasting is your show. Do what you want. Listen to listen to your audience. Filter it, and then make your." Make your choices for your own content and and for your audience. Uh, you will see in 2015 more regular. Uh, the podcast roundtable will be more regular. Uh, I'm predicting a uh, a personal studio upgrade, as you see. Maybe I won't be holding the microphone, although I think I think that might be permanent because I'm a big fan of the rock and roll style podcast. Steve doing his best rare take of podcasters roundtable oh, impression. Yeah, baby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that doesn't happen in the post show. It doesn't happen in the intro. That doesn't have Dave slamming down Mike. So you will see this show that you're watching or listening to right now in your feed on a more regular basis. 2014 was spotty. Finished off really good. We've been here every two weeks. Been enjoying it. Uh, finally been able to uh, wrestle back a little time from uh, from from baby life and uh, fitting in the roundtable more often. So you'll see that a lot more. Uh, looking forward to that. There's a bunch of other stuff, but check out the roundtable. Uh, if you are watching this uh, live or on YouTube or wherever you're seeing this, go over. There is an audio-only podcast version uh, you can subscribe to as well. All right. Well, yeah, right. There's a personal chat if you're not uh, privy to Hangouts on Air. And uh, Dave, it just popped up. It's interesting the way Google changed the way this displays. It now displays right in the screen. It looks like everyone sees it. Dave just said it's time to have another kid, right? So, this show is going too good. Got to have another kid and throw, derail that whole thing. That's not my prediction for 2015, Dave. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So I think we, we've gotten some promos out there. Really quick, just tell us your website, and we will say goodbye. And thanks again for joining us. Daniel, thanks again. I'm Daniel J. Lewis from the audacity to podcast.com. Awesome. Dave, thank you, sir. School of podcasting.com. Short and sweet. Mr. Paul Colligan, thank you again for being a new roundtabler, once a roundtabler, always a roundtabler. We look forward to having you back thepodcastreport.com. Don't forget the the. <laughs> you couldn't get podcastreport.com too? Go there. It's a long story. <laughs> All right. All right, Dave. <laughs> uh, we, maybe we'll hear that one later. That's a good, that's a good, there's good content there. Steve, thanks again. Thank you so much for letting me on once again. Uh, website is moneyplansos.com. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you'll, you'll, you'll see Steve back here some, some way, somehow. He'll, he'll probably talk Daniel into a topic and then get back on here. Maybe he'll send another T-shirt. No, I have one T-shirt. That's enough. But uh, thanks again for the T-shirt. That was awesome, You're Steve. Welcome. I appreciate that. All right, podcastroundtable.com. We'll see you on the next round. Until then, wave bye, everybody.